Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video we did Slayer, believe it or not. I know, it's crazy. Me training Slayer, what the heck? As you can see in the chat box, we just got to level 74, and today we are going to keep on training the skill. We'll get at least 75, get gargoyles unlocked, and keep on going from there. So let's go ahead and grab another Slayer task. We'll see what the first one of the video is going to be. Okay. The other important thing I forgot to mention that we unlocked last video was chivalry. We got uh, from 52, I think it was, all the way up to 61 prayer. I just used up all the insult heads that we had in the bank. This is like the ideal inventory after an Abbey Spectre's task. Unfortunately, we don't have the herb sack, but I think that's the next upgrade I want to get from doing Slayer. I refuse to do Tithe Farm to get the herb sack because if I am going to spend any time there at all, which I will eventually, I would only go there to get the unique stuff unlocked from there. If I'm going for the herb sack anyways, I would much prefer Slayer XP over farming XP, especially because I'm not the skiller of the team. So last video I collected from Kingdom and I got a bunch of maple logs and I gave the maple logs to Spook because we're trying to get her to 69 fletching, which right now she's training it. I think she's at 63 or something so far, but I think she has almost enough maple logs to get there. She gave me back all the maple longbow she had at the time and she's still getting more right now because I'm going to be alchemies because first off it's like break even with the GP in terms of the cost of the nature rune, but because I need to get magic up. I I want to get 77 for super glass make and then spook already mined like 10k buckets of sand so i'm going to super glass make that into molten glass give the glass back to her and then she'll get her crafting up so that we can get glories and let me tell you having a mounted glory in the poh would be so nice plus just having like the actual glory for slayer would be a nice upgrade to get but yeah in between hits while i'm fighting monsters as long as it's not something i have to like pray flick for i'll just be alking between each hit to get that 65 magic xp drop she left me roses in the group storage surprises let me know she cares. On one hand I kind of just want to use the Tome of Fire for doing Slayer so that way I can save fire runes because it doesn't use charges if you use the Tome for non-combat spells or certain other spells too like Ivan Staff also doesn't use charges on the Tome of Fire but at the same time it also cuts into the Slayer XP and kind of defeats the purpose of getting passive magic XP if it is taken away from another skill. I know it seems like I have a lot of fire runes and it kind of is for right now at least but if I'm just constantly alking we are going to go through those fast even with all the fire runes we get from slayer but especially once i get a trident it's like 12.5k fire runes to charge it up each time and after getting a trident this stack will go down very fast and i'll probably have to end up buying a bunch of fire runes going forward first black dehyde van braces on the account i mean barrow's gloves are still better but i guess it's something that we could just risk and wildy i will say though they do have two more mage defense over barrow's gloves so I mean, maybe that means something. There's a strength level, 88 strength. Just constantly having to buy more nature runes to get more money so I can alk more stuff so I can afford to buy more nature runes. It's an endless vicious cycle of gaining magic XP. Whoa, what the heck? A dragonstone drop. I mean, we already have dragonstones, but... Now we have another one for, I guess, the jewelry box later on. Something that's been bothering me for, like, pretty much the start of the account is my bank. And no, not because I'm used to playing UYM. Well, that's probably part of it. Um, but it's been annoying because it's been pretty much full since, like, the first week of playing the account. Because I've been playing UYM for so long, I don't know how to, like, take care of a bank. Like, I can't... <laughs> I can't put this stuff in here because the thing's full. Like, look at all this junk I have, though. I, I really don't know why I have, like, half these items. I have the beads, even though we both have the quest done. Just a lot of really pointless stuff. Oh, you know what's going to be really good, though, is the steel key ring. Wait, let me see how many keys we have. <laughs> That's so many keys. Okay, we'll see how many of these we can just put on the steel key ring. Let's see. That's... <laughs> That's quite a lot of keys. So I'll go through the bank and try to get rid of as much stuff as I can from here. It's kind of funny timing too because just today in the news post they said that they want to change the cap of the bank to give you like buyable bank slots. Not buyable with real money but buyable with GP. Um, with I think the lowest tier is like add 40 spots for one mil. We're pretty far away at this point from first off needing to have bank space and secondly having the money to even buy more bank space. But if they make that change they're also going to give the pin and authenticator give you plus 20 instead of just plus 8. So that'd be pretty cool. Either way let me clear the bank out a lot. So nothing amazing but we cleared out like almost 100 spaces in the bank and then I have a bunch of stuff in this tab too that we can put in the POH in a bit. I just have to like build the stuff. But right 
right now, I need to check Kingdom because, you know, Spook is finishing off 69 Fletching for the Rune Crossbow, and she just checked her Kingdom, and apparently she's like 700 Maple Logs off from getting the level. I was just thinking, though, it's nice that we have, like, the majority of the quests out of the way, or at least, like, the bulk quests out of the way, the boring stuff. We just have, like, the end game quests left. So I was able to drop a lot of items I had in the bank for no reason, like random dyes or onions, stuff like that, because I know I'm not going to need it for, like, the end game quests, like Monkey Madness 2 and stuff. Or even so, at this point, the account so far progressed that I have so many forms of transportation unlocked that it's not hard to get items on the fly. Uh, what are we doing here? Oh, we haven't collected Alfred. Okay, so we have to wait one more day. Let's go and build the costume room. Probably one of the most OP rooms in the POH for UYM because there's so much stuff you can store. Uh, I think we can just build like the tier one for everything in here, just the oak things. Well, actually everything except the cape rack, we need a higher level for that. Oh boy, here we go, the fancy dress box. Wait, I just realized we can't store everything, can we? There's like a limit. We can only store two... Oh, I forgot about that. I'm so used to being able to just store everything. You know what else I'm used to though? Not being able to individually withdraw items. UIMs also can't store multiples of items too. So once we like get further on and we get like dupes of uh, clue uniques, uh, we could just store it all in the POH here. Well, I guess we just have to pick and choose which sets for now. They did the most ridiculous change to the costume room, which I still don't quite understand why they did this, um, especially for UYM. I was on the UYM, I was like at the stage where I was killing Corp, and they changed the costume room so that like the armor case and the magic wardrobe, the tier one, you know, the oak armor case that requires like 40 something construction for both of these, uh, it used to be you could only store one of any set, I think one, maybe two or something. But then they changed it so that the tier one could store 20 or 25 separate outfits, which I mean, in retrospect, maybe it should have been that way from the start. But it was just funny because even at the stage I was at on the UIM killing Corp and super far progress, even at the time, I didn't even have 20 sets or 25 sets or whatever in the POH. I think I had like maybe 15 sets in the armor case, but at that point, it's like, why even have a limit then? Look at me, expert UIM. I, I know all the things that you can put in the POH, of course. I was uh, testing you guys. As you can see, I'm just clearing out the seeds right now because I'm gonna give them all to Spook because she completely ran out, apparently. She's been staying on top of the farm runs, I guess, and I have done exactly zero farm runs in the last few days or at least herb runs, that is. So uh, these will definitely get a lot more use with her than they would with me. 80 hit points, that looks so nice. And there is 72 magic. I'm getting closer and closer, just gotta keep on alking. Yo, I was running low on the maple longbows, so I decided to go check the group storage and she put all these maple longbows in there. I don't think she told me about that, so it's a nice little surprise. Wow. <laughs> Hey, another black mask. It's four in 1102 KC, so either another Slayer Helm or another upgrade to uh, one of our combat dummies. Kind of forgot to switch into my Dehide for this, so I gotta change that once uh, the minigames teleport resets. I think for Abbey Specters, I'm gonna start wearing prayer gear instead of magic defense gear and then just praying um, because I don't feel as bad because like if you look at the inventory, you can see all the ranners that we get. So I think the prayer pots will more than upkeep themselves if I want to use prayer pots for Abbey Spectre. So I'm going to go do that. Also got another Dark Mystic Bottom, which I'll give to Spook. And there is 75 Slayer that finally unlocks Gargi Boys, which are going to make us a lot of GP. Although just like with a lot of these other monsters, or I guess all the other monsters, I'm not going to be doing them off task because I do still care more about Slayer XP than I do about GP. But once we do start getting the Gargi tasks, it will be very nice for the cash stack. Whoa, Dragon Throne Axe. New collection log slot. That's a 1 out of 2,000 drop if you're on task, so uh... Pretty rare, using all my RNG in the wrong places, apparently. Oh my god, 12 seaweed spores from a wyvern? Oh, that's so good. And there's 73 magic. I swear, this task probably has to be the best Slayer task for doing Alk Slayer. Don't have to worry about picking up anything, they all just aggro you. So nice. Ooh, 89 strength. Well, just hopped a bunch of worlds and stocked up on a bunch of nature runes. We have over 3k now. Whoa, Dust Battle Staff, dude, from the freaking Dust Devil. That's 1 in 2k, isn't it? Wait, let me check. No, even better. It's a 1 out of 4,000 drop, the Dust Battle Staff. Um, so I mean, it just acts as unlimited dust runes, so like maybe if we're making house tabs, we won't have to waste earth and air runes, or we won't have to waste dust runes, um, and we'll save an inventory spot. 
well, I guess if you have the rune pouch, it won't be saving the inventory spot, but we just have the dust staff equipped and then just use the law runes to make the tabs or just for teleporting home in general. I'm trying to think of uses for it and like all I can really come up with is just like using it for house teleports. But the thing is like dust runes are not hard to get like just from doing Slayer I get so many dust devil tasks so it's not even like a worry for me anyways but I don't know, it's still a cool item. Whoa, 81 hit points. Okay, now we can go ahead and check the kingdom and collect. And then Spook needs like seven to 800 maple logs, so I'll just give her those. And then she can finish off the fletching level. As a lot of you probably know, I used to do cooking segments in the videos, especially during leagues, but it has been a while and there's been so many comments asking to see more cooking. I've been meaning to throw in one of these segments again, and today we finally have a good excuse to go outside because of today's sponsor, which will be included in the cooking segment. And full disclosure, they only asked for a one minute ad, I just kind of wanted to integrate it into the cooking segment because I just felt like cooking. Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post, which is a monthly membership club you can join for free that delivers members a box of high quality goods each month. They purchase almost all their products from small businesses and each box they deliver has a retail value of $70, except it only costs you $45. At the start, they'll have you fill out a questionnaire to see what you're interested in, because there's a huge variety of products that can be related to cooking, the outdoors, home goods, kitchen goods, clothes, and so much more. And then before they ship each box, you'll have the option to preview it, and you could either keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip the month at no charge. You only have to pay for what you want. The Spoke Post actually sent me four boxes, so I'll show you what each of these are. So this one is the Weekender. It's a travel bag, and you can see it like folds down like that. This one is HO, which is uh, pretty much like a pestle and mortar, or I should say a molgahete. And there's like a taco and hot sauce making kit in here. This one is called Carnivore. There's a very nice knife and some seasoning. And then this one is called Bubble Wrap. I'm just kidding, it's called Scorch. And uh, it's pretty much just like a bunch of different hot sauces. And I'm really, really looking forward to trying all of these. We're using this as an excuse to go outside and it is our first time in a month leaving the house. It's so bright outside. I haven't seen this in so long. I'm getting a very nice monitor tan, I don't know if you can tell. Are you playing RuneScape Mobile? <laughs> Gaming. We just got back from good old, good old Mart of the Wall and we just got enough food to last us for probably like another month so we don't have to leave the house again but we're gonna be making some stuff with the stuff that we got from bespoke i've never had to have two shopping carts for groceries before so this is a big milestone in life you could say before we use the molcajete for the first time we have to cure it so that we can actually properly use it this thing's actually like super heavy but we just pretty much grind up the rice and it's gonna like fill in all the cracks in there this way we get all the like natural debris from this volcanic rock off of it so it doesn't get into the food and also so that the food doesn't get stuck. Hey! Get stuck in the, the molcajete, the pestle and molcajete. We're going to be using our molcajete to make guac today. And what good is guac without tortilla chips? Actually it's kind of false information. Guac is definitely good without tortilla chips, but um, we're going to be making fresh tortilla chips with these tortillas. And we're going to use this knife that we just got. There's a lot of uses besides just meat. You can use it to cut the stack of tortilla chips. It's kind of uneven, but it's fine. Chips are still chips. I like to cut them into six. This is so much nicer than my old knife. I'll show you in a second. But um, my old knife I've had for like four or five years now. Since uh, my last job, actually, my manager gave this old knife to me. And it's been like, it's almost been like starting to chip here too. So I'm very glad that I got this new knife. Ooh, here they go into the oven. And then after they come out the oven, that's fine. I like to put the salt on here. And then over here on the other tray, we have some filling for the tacos. It's gonna be tofu, but it's gonna be seasoned. So many different kinds of seasoning. Soy sauce, sesame oil, garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, chili powder, and more. But most importantly, the key ingredient is the smoked paprika. And now let's get this into the oven. And then we're gonna start on the guacamole in the meantime. I swear with the dull knife, it is really annoying to cut onions, so let's try slicing through that. We've got our molcajete here, all cured and ready to go. And you only have to do it once, apparently, just the first time before you ever use it, and then you're just set after that. But um, 
I've never used this before and I'm very excited to try it out for the first time. I guess we just toss these in here and start grinding away, right? Um, the reason why you want to use a molcajete and why it's better is because when you just chop up herbs, it doesn't truly get the flavor out, but when you grind it up in a molcajete, what I was reading about, is that it gets like more of the flavor out that you wouldn't otherwise normally get out. So I'll just grind this up for a few minutes. Probably going to take a while and I'll add in the onion too. This is crazy, dude. I'm literally training herbal in real life. This is so great. The onion and cilantro is all mixed up in here now. This is fun, dude. It's, it's just like a new experience. That's what's really cool about Bespoke Post. You're just like having all these different new experiences that you wouldn't otherwise think about. And now it's time for the avocados. As much as I really love this big new knife, there is a time and place for everything. There was another box that Bespoke had that was like an herb cutter. I didn't get it, but it looked really cool. It probably would have been fun to uh, chop up the cilantro with that before putting it into the grinder or the the pestle and mortar, the mocajite. I love saying that word, it's so fun. I used to work at a sandwich shop and I cut so many avocados every single day, probably like at least a dozen per day, if not more. So this is bringing back a lot of old memories. Add a little bit of salt, a little bit of lime juice. Oops. <laughs> if there's anything that you should take serious in life, it should be guacamole. So good. Guacamole is my weakness. Honestly, chips with any kind of sauce is my weakness, but I mean, that whole sauce or salsa or whatever, but guacamole is definitely the biggest out of all the weaknesses for me. Oh, so good, dude. I've also never used one of these taco rack thingies before, but since they sent it to me, we're gonna try it out. I, I assume we just like fold the shells and put them in there. I don't know if it really matters if we put the stuff in here to cook, because it's already cooking in the oven. So I mean, we could just like cook the shells and then put all the stuff in afterwards once we take this out. Look at this thing, it's so cute. I figured it probably makes the most sense to do it this way, put the taco rack on the tray, just so it's not like hard to take out of the oven. It doesn't like fall through the cracks or anything. Oh my God, I have not been so excited since dinner yesterday. Oh no, it looks like this one kind of cracked a bit. That's fine. This is how it's supposed to be. It just keeps its form after you put it in the oven. So that's pretty much a wrap. It's uh, time for taco night with Milady. Milady of the guacamole. Just kidding, I love you. <laughs> to me, this is what Bespoke Post is all about. It's about trying new things and creating fun memories. Just remember, everything is happier and more fun with guac. To get 20% off your first box, you can use my link in the description with code MUDKIP20 at checkout, or go to bspk.me slash MUDKIP20. And thank you so much again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Oh boy, I'm so excited for the rune crossbow. I can almost taste it, except I can't even equip it yet. So we do have to train up some range. I mean, just barely. You know, earlier I said that I want to get the herb sack next with the Slayer points. That was probably a lie. It's most likely going to end up being broad fletching. A long, long time ago, we got 75 Slayer at the Worms. And by long time ago, I mean 12 hours ago. And here we are again, this time getting level 76 Slayer. Uh, let's take a look at the day today. That's, it's a long day of doing Slayer. <laughs> what? Dude, I, we have one kill left on task and I was about to go to bed. What? Dude, dragon Sword? Okay, wait, let's look at the stats. So we have 110 stab bonus with the Leaf Blade Sword and then with the Dragon Sword, Oh wait, oh wait, what's the strength though? 91 melee strength versus 78. Okay, so Dragon Sword probably is quite a bit better. Oh, dude, what? <laughs> That's insane. And we got the Dragon Throne Axes earlier today too. Well, what the heck is going on? Oh, that looks so sick though. I mean, it looks really lame, but like, it looks, it looks sick at the same time. You used to only be able to get this from raids, but then when this dungeon came out, they moved it over here. Okay, wait, okay, last worm. Let's just see how it looks. Just gonna poke the worm with the sword. Oh, that looks so cool. Sword is also a one out of 2K drop if you're on task. Oh, what's this? There's a mysterious stranger here. I wonder, I wonder what they're doing. Oh, this isn't gonna work if I just attack the cowboy. <laughs>
Oh, I wonder what this could be. The rune crossbow. I wonder why Settled got 99 Hunter with Swamp Lizards and then had a bunch of lucky Impling scouted to get it, when instead you could just have another Iron Man trade it to you. Duh. And that is going to be level 74 magic. That means we can now boost plus 3 to 77 with a Wizard's Mind Bomb to cast Super Glass Make, which is going to be very important for getting Spoot to the crafting level to get glories. However, I think I'd want to get at least one more magic magic level just so we have a little bit more of a buffer of time before the magic level goes back down so that way I don't have to drink the wizard's mind bombs as often. Okay the slayer task is over and what I want to do now is go imbue the slayer helm because when it's not imbued uh, and you're on slayer task you only get the boost for melee but if it's imbued it also adds a boost on for range and mage and now that we have the rune crossbow even though I might not even really use it for slayer we should just get the slayer helm imbued anyways it adds um, like extra defense to it and extra offense as well. So for each time we go into Nightmare Zone, we have to pay 26k GP, which I put money into the coffer and it's just going to take it out of there. Okay, I went through the whole list here and I think I should have removed everything that wasn't melee only. Uh, and for this first session, I'm just gonna be praying. I'm just gonna be praying melee. Because just right now, at the start, we need to get some points so we can afford to buy the overloads and the absorptions. So we just gotta use this prayer setup just for the first bit. Wait, I wasn't looking. I, I wasn't paying attention. Something <laughs> something just killed me because I only got 1800 points. Wait. All right, we gotta buy a rock cake now so we can do like the actual method for Nightmare Zone. So just gonna buy it from this guy over here. Dude, I just found the funniest animation in the game. If you try to pick up a dwarven rock cake and you don't have ice gloves, on your character does this i don't think i've seen any animation in the game like that before that's amazing well just spent all the points we have which isn't much but that should be enough to get us like a decent amount of points just by going back in there we'll be going in with the max strength gear this time well, <laughs> not max, but like max for me. You want to stay at one hit point, which is why we have the rock cake, because when you're at one hit point and you have the absorptions, the absorptions are like pretty much free damage that you can take from any attack style essentially. And it means that the max damage that you take from any hit is always going to be one because your hit points is currently one. So if a monster normally would have like hit a 20 or something, it's only going to take away one from the absorption. Wow, a long bone. <laughs> if you didn't know, Nightmare Zone is a dangerous death for hardcore group Iron Man. I mean, luckily we're not hardcore, but uh, just something to keep in mind for any of you that play hardcore out there. Not regular hardcore Iron Man, just for the groups. Whoa, huge strength level coming in. That's level 90. This thing right here, the inadequacy, this is the best part of Nightmare Zone. Did you see that big jump in points? I think that was like 60k or something. <laughs> it gives the juiciest points. This is the next best part though, the power surge power up. You just keep on using your spec over and over because it constantly restores such a nice feeling. No, I'm like stuck here. I have to wait for ultimate force to spawn because there's like not really anything I can or should do here uh, but i just want to show you that i am able to average like almost 800k points per hour based on this tracker over here i mean this is without dirox and pretty mediocre gear so i feel like it's pretty decent and we need 1250k points in total to imbue the black mask so you can see we're pretty close already which means in total it's like an hour and a half to two hours to get this imbue you could also imbue the black mask at soul wars for 500 zeal and i've never done soul wars so i don't know how much zeal you can get per hour but i would assume that would take longer than an hour and a half or two hours to get 500 zeal right i just googled it and some like old reddit post said that they got 100 zeal per hour so that'd be five hours maybe at soul wars i don't know but either way we're almost done here all right let's grab our chips and dip on out of here and uh, i guess we gotta grab the slayer helm out of the thing let's head over to upgrades and then imbue the slayer helmet so on top of the 16.67% melee boost that we got, it also now gives a 15% damage and accuracy boost to range and mage when we're on Slayer task as well. Um, and then I'll put the stats on screen before and after. I mentioned before that the stats are slightly increased too. It's also a decent helmet slot to use too when you're starting up Zora on an iron. And one more very important thing to unlock today is broader fletching. So it costs 300 slayer points and this will give us the ability to fletch our own broad arrows and broad bolts. 300 slayer points and uh, we still have 598 left over. We got a fire giants task so I think I'll just AFK fire giants with the bone crossbow just because I want to finish up um, 61 range so we can equip the rune crossbow. It's kind of the goal of this video I guess to unlock the rune crossbow. I guess while we're here we should buy some unfinished broad bolt packs. Um, it comes out to 55 GP per we'll buy a uh, maybe a couple thousand of these for now. I guess this is also like free fletching XP, well not free, but some extra fletching XP as we're uh, running around different places. 
Uh, we are currently 17k to level, so we'll finish off this level at the Fire Giants and then we'll equip the Rune Crossbow. Oh, dude, this six hour log. Oh man, wait, what time is it right now? It's not even 3 p.m. Wow, I, okay, I, I literally, I just skipped right through it. There's 61 range, now we can equip the rune crossbow. Oh, dude, and I, uh, I was fletching all these broad bolts while I was hitting the fire giant so we could equip all those. And the very first hit with the RCB is going to be a uh, seven. Sick. Well, we got the rune crossbow. We imbued the slayer helm. We got a couple rare drops in this video. We did some cooking. I'd say it's been a pretty successful day or a couple of days for me. For you, it's been a successful 25 minutes of watching. We're up to 1569 total level, and then here's this page as well. Uh, and if you haven't already, make sure you check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs channel, which is linked in every video description. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.